Hey traders, T Bradley 90 here. For those who do not know, Alex took on the challenge recently of seeing how much he can grow a $30,000 account in 30 trading days and the results are in and he made $84,000 in less than 30 trading days, which turned his $30,000 account into $113,000. Alex recently put together a free mentorship course with his mentor, Bao, explaining exactly how he did this. The link is available at myinvestingclub.co slash Alex. There is limited seating every single week, so be sure to reserve your spot. As a very special gift to our YouTube viewers, I want to announce something very special. This is my personal phone number, my personal number that I am putting out to you guys. If you have any questions about joining MIC or on the fence about joining our wonderful club, you can contact me now directly and personally, and I will get back to you. Hey guys, Austin here, back for another trade recap, this time on RAD, R-A-D, a large cap. Uh, but before I do, I want to say I'm not licensed or registered, I'm not a financial advisor, and none of this should be taken as investment advice, even if it sounds like it. Okay, so RAD, uh, coming in, um, coming into this day, uh, I, had a, I had the idea for a first red day on it. Um, clearly, uh, for those who are familiar with the first red day, the first red day, is uh, is when you attempt to short a stock that has gone parabolic, just green, 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 day after day after day, you know, green up, update, 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 and you're just waiting for that first red day, that first, that first profit taking day, that first day where sellers start to take over control, um, and it shifts from buyers in control to sellers in control, and so we had a great opportunity for our first red day here on the 27th. And the reason um, I, I wasn't going to do this video at first just because like it didn't play out exactly the way I wanted it to. Um, uh, but I realized like th we don't get that many opportunities for first red day. So I figured I might as well do it and explain what I was thinking um, when it happened. So normally I have two criterias. I have two criterias for first red days. Now the two criterias are like the two variations of the setup. There's the first red day that gaps up and the first red day that gaps down. So for example, RAD could have gapped down from, you know, it, it closed here on the 26th or uh, at like 19s. If it had gapped down to 17 or 18, right? 1750 or something like that. Then like a push up, right? To 19, right? Like, so if we had like, you know, you know, where we closed it, if we had, gap down to here and then push up to 19 that's variation number one is when it gaps down and then what I like to do is I like to short the push into red to green um, expecting red to green to fail and then to add on a confirmation as red to green fails so those are my two those are my two um, uh, that's my plan of attack for the gap down version now the other variation which is the one we got today is the gap up variation when a stock goes green 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 gaps up and and then you're still looking to get that first that first sign where the sellers are going to start to take control right um and i'm trying to zoom out on the chart here and so yeah and so it, it's always great when there's like a a, a beautiful level to to kind of go off of but on on the left of the chart here there's not something super great to go off of. So that makes this first red day a lot harder. And it also made it a lot harder. What really was the curveball in this first red day is that we didn't, it gapped way up, right? We closed at 19 and we opened at 22. That's a very big gap up for something that's already up five days in a row of straight parabolic green action. So how do you tackle something like this? Well, norm, the normal variation like if this would have gapped up, you know, this closed at like 1920, it gaps up to say 20, right? Normally what I, like my A setup for the first red day is if we had opened, you know, we close here, floated up. If we had opened at around 20, we tank in the morning to go and test red to green. That means that there'll be a red to green line right at around here. Let me make a horizontal line right at like, what was it? 19 right there. There'll be like a red to green line right at around here. Um, and if we're opening at like 20 or 20, 50, we're going to pull down at the open into this level. Um, and now what I like to do is I'd like to see that level bounce or somewhat hold 
then I want to see um, a push up, and then I want to see a lower low in conjunction with the the prior clothesline. Now that's my A setup variation for this secondary gap up version of the first red day. I like to short a lower low, a breakdown in essence of the, the I want to basically see a breakdown on the prior close, meaning prior close failed to hold. This is probably when profit takers are going to come. Now what makes this scenario very tricky is that we get way up, right? So there is, there's really no chance of it opening at 22 and tanking all the way down to 19 and then getting a bounce and a lower low on 19, right? So I knew that was going to be out the window, but that doesn't mean that I still, like, I still don't want to capture this, you know, this first red day. I do, there's, I do feel like there's an edge here in trading this as a first red day setup. So the trigger, the, the signal is not ideal, right? It, this has become, this for me becomes not an ideal first red day just because it doesn't fit perfectly into what I like. There's no chance of a breakdown upon prior close or anywhere close to it, right? Like, you know, if, if you know, if like 1920 or something was the prior close, maybe I'll use 20 or 1950 if it's close enough. I can group those together on a large cap stock, but we weren't even close. We gapped up to 22 and that's too far away. So that, that's the curveball in this situation. So, um, uh, I, you know, I experimented with just shorting it right out of the gate. And let me just pull up my chart just um, to, to show you guys. I experimented with shorting it right out of the open, thinking that maybe if 22 was the pre-market kind of, you know, it was kind of basing here near the, the close of pre-market. If we can break down here, maybe I'll have a nice tight risk on 22.50 or something like that. Tight risk. I say tight risk, but it's, you know, it's just a feeler trade and um, it's, it's a large cap, right? I give it more range. I, I, I'll let something move like a dollar with this kind of range on a, on a starter. But hey traders, T Bradley 90 here, Tosh Bradley from My Investing Club Chat. Just wanted to reach out to you personally and show you how to contact myself personally. If you have any questions about joining MIC, about MIC in general, or are on the fence and need a little bit of guidance before you join. For the first time ever, I have put out my personal number for you to reach me directly among my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com and our Twitter and IG handles. Reach out today and get any information you need on what makes MIC so great and why you should join us today.